Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian, this is my kitchen table. Uh, it's not been long since I last did an update, but um, I've got new model in and I thought I would do another inbox review uh, just uh, for your guys' interest. Um, and also show you what I've been working on since my last update. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I reach over here, we can see I've been filming some more on the Heinkel. So I've done the base painting for the detail work in there and the cockpit that's all start left to dry now before i start doing some dry brushing and washes and then working on the photo etch uh, so that's coming on nicely and the other thing is i am building another tamiya uh, german eight ton semi-track 20 millimeter flat filling mm -hmm. sdk fz 71 um, exactly the same as in my last update i did say that i'd sold that one we also got a commission bill to build another one, uh, so I'm quite excited about that. So at the moment, that is currently in primer. We've got all the wheels, and we have, we've got the, the gun mount. Uh, we have the cab, as well as the guns. I've hollowed out the barrels, again, as I did last time. And then the blast shields. Uh, we have the main chassis and the main body. So, what's the reason for the review? Well, the review is for Trumpeter's version of the same vehicle. So, they are labeling it as the German two, two centimeter flat filling 38 Oust. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that because I'm not used to German. SDK FZ71 early version um, with the trailer. Um, again, I can't pronounce German, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm no use to German. But um, So this is the same vehicle and it's got the ammunition trailer as well. So I thought, since I've got it in, let's, let's have a quick look and I can give you some thoughts on the differences between the Trumpeter one and the Tamiya one and see what we think. So, enough waffling from me. Let's get the camera on the table, get the box on the table, let's have a look inside and see what we think. So, here we are, back on the table. Uh, first things first, box art. Amazing box art. Trumpet has always been great for the box art, but this is particularly good. Uh, detail's fantastic. Really gives you that sort of feeling of an action shot. Um, even got the old hurricane in the background going down, a bit of smoke. So, yeah, really nice box art. Uh, this is 135th scale from Trumpeter. It's a big box. You can see I'm struggling to get it in the frame. So it's a detail scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. Actual model may vary from box image. Warning, not for children under three. Well, really not for children under 14. Trumpeter kits are, by their nature, very comprehensive. And... They're not for inexperienced modelers, they're certainly for maybe intermediate to experienced modelers, from my own experience. Um, there maybe are some easier ones out there, but I tend to think there are a lot of trumpeter kits. You do need to get a few Tamiya builds under your belt before you tackle something that's a little bit more complicated. So, um, length 285 millimeters, width 69 millimeters, height 101.8 millimeters. And if we look on the side, so we've got the little bit of blurb there. If you want to pause that, you can look at that. A beautiful picture of the, the vehicle with its ammunition limber. We've got a photo etch. We've got the kit price, the original price. Now, I didn't pay this. I bought this off eBay, so that's obviously been the store price when it was new. And we have got a kit number of 01523. So there we go. Look on the end. A little box damage, shelf worn, and then we've got some colour photos of a finished kit. Looking good, detail looks good, doesn't it? Okie dokie, there we go, 14 plus. So, and there's your barcode. And same on this end. So, let's lift it off and have a look inside. Good tight fitting lid. That's one thing about Trumpeter, they've always got really sturdy boxes. Um, so, the contents of the box is usually always okay. So starting off we've got instructions and in the instructions we have got 
our color call out. So we've got the standard German grey pink color. Uh, this is the early version they're saying. Uh, okay, okay, so it is just the standard color grey, there's nothing on the back. Sometimes um, you'll get them in the, the Dunkel Geld, I think it is, this sort of sandy yellow color, but this is just supposed to be grey. So, instructions, and then a box full of parts, and it literally is full of parts. So let's go through the instructions first, and then we'll start going through the part sprues. So, trumpet instructions are usually very good. The color callout's very detailed. The color callout paints are Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrel. Um, the most colors you're going to get is either Vallejo or Mr. Hobby. Um, it's only calling out for one Tamiya. You'd be able to match them in German grey is excess 63 for Tamiya. Um, and I think if you go by colour match on the on the colour print, you're not going to be far wrong. Right, let's have a look at the instructions then. So starting off, we've got the parts sprue tree diagram. Uh, we've got tyres, we've got wire, we've got rope, we've got photo etch, decals, and and we're on the construction so starting off with the transmission and then we've got the front leaf spring and the transmission going in onto the chassis rails and then we're building more of the chassis up so you've got all the cross members and substructures going together and we're moving on to an engine, so this is good. Full detailed engine in this kit, so we're already ahead of the Tamiya kit, I think. So some more parts and sundries. The winch, these things had big whacking winches, PTO driven winches. And that is the rear cross member with the towing hitch, or pintle, depending on what you want to call it. And then we've got possibly air tanks, fuel tank going in. Suspension, engine going in, and then we are on to finishing off all the suspension carriers for the axles. Right, then we're moving on to the steering mechanism, uh, the front axle and carrying mechanism, and then on to the road wheels. And the final set of road wheels, drive sprockets, and it looks like it's got individual link tracks, which is another bonus over the Tamiya kit. So if we just have a stop here, if we look at that, and then we get the, the Tamiya part in, we can immediately see the difference between the trumpeter kit and the Tamiya kit. The detail is another level with the trumpeter kit. We've got a very bog standard, Transmission, the suspension looks okay. The Tamiya one's actually movable, but I think the Trumpeter one's more refined. Um, the detail, I think, as far as you can see on the side is all right, but you don't have an engine, you don't have a complete transmission, uh, you don't have a fuel tank, and the gear levers aren't going down to the transmission, and it looks like there's a few bits and pieces that are missing on the back here that's included in the Trumpeter kit. So, yeah, I think it's for one point the trumpeter. Although, how easy it's going to build, I don't know. The time your kit just falls together. So, if we carry on, we're then into the, the rear load deck. This is doing all the under bracing for it and the mud guards. And then we've got the sides, the wagon sides that have got a wire mesh grill and the pioneer tools on them and the rear steps. So that all looks quite similar to the Tamiya one. And then flip it over, you've got the checkered detail there and everything going on. Now when these things were fighting, these sides actually dropped down, those steps folded down and that was how the guys accessed the deck and they used that as part of the fighting space with the, with the side skirts coming down. So again, if we have a quick look at the Tamiya, okay, I've when, when the Tamiya kit comes, you just get the deck in one piece. There's very little detail underneath. This is just a sprue I've glued to the bottom to hold onto it for when I paint. Um, you have to construct the front cab and the bonnet and the grill all gets constructed and gets glued into it. Now, 
I've glued it all together to make it easier for me to paint. Uh, it's slightly out of sequence on the timing instruction, but it does give you um, a good idea of the level of detail you're getting on, on this kit compared to the trumpeter kit. Again, trumpeter has to win out on details, but I reserve judgment to see how easy it is to construct. The other difference between Tammy and Trumpeter is the side, the wagon sides, then Tammy just has the usual plastic square mesh that you have to cut out and, and glue on, whereas Trumpeter have got a piece of photo etch that's put the, the mesh grill in. When I last built my last uh, one of these for Tammy kit, I actually used some aftermarket mesh that I cut to size and put in, and it made it so much better, because I don't think the Tammy mesh is particularly well scaled and detailed. Anyway. Exhaust going in and then we're starting to make up the front bulkhead for the driver's compartment Okay, moving on uh, We've got the the, the floor that's joining at the front and then the rear part that's got a seat on it And then the bench seat for the driver and the battery um, Quite similar I think to Tamiya Although Tamiya's is all one piece so it's easier to construct, I think. But the detail on Tamiya is really good. And I know I've certainly, for the last one I finished, a little bit of detail painting and it's going to be, it comes up beautiful. So they're probably on an even keel there. Tamiya might win a bit for the seat ease of construction, but your know, trumpeter might be a little more accurate. Right, moving on. A few sundries going on the engine. Again, finishing off the engine, we've got the dash panel there and then the sides going on and this is the, the rear bench seat going onto the back of the driver's compartment. Certainly there's more detail there than there is in the Tamiya kit, um, but we'll have to wait and see how it goes together. Looking at the construction is pretty similar. Tamiya had the two side pieces and then the front um, panel going on, so that's all very similar. And it's very similar construction on the Tamiya kit to the Trumpetal kit, although the Tamiya radiator panel is one piece and it looks like it's three piece here for the Trumpeter kit. Interestingly, if you wanted to, you could leave these removable or have them off. Sometimes they, they were off to aid cooling. Uh, the side vent of louvered panels here and you'd be able to show full engine detail. And if you put a bit of wire and harnesses on the engine, you're going to get a very, very detailed kit. So we've got some bits of PE going on, photo etch, a grab handle. We've got all the lights, uh, convoy lights, mirrors, and side markers going in. Very similar to the Tamiya. And windscreen. Nice to see it's got windscreen wipers going on. Again, that's lacking from the Tamiya kit, and it's a nice addition. Now, the biggest difference between this kit and the Tamiya kit is the Tamiya kit has got a canvas for the cab. Maybe not the most detailed, but with a bit of subtle dry brushing and washing uh, to highlight the low spots and bring out the high spots, it does look really realistic. Uh, the last one I built, I was really happy the way it turned out. So Trumpeter doesn't include this, so if you wanted to do this, you'd have to make up, um, well, either see if you can get a spare part from a Tamiya kit or make up a frame and do it yourself with tissue paper and PVA glue. Anyway, moving on, once we've finished the, the, the truck itself, we're moving on to the armament. Uh, we're constructing the main part of the gun. We've already constructed here the guns themselves onto the side plates, and then bringing it all together. Now this is actually quite similar to the Tamiya construction and looks very, very similar, if not almost identical to the way Tamiya goes together. Of note, this panel here folds down when the gun's in operation and the spent shells are ejected through the center piece here and come out the front. Uh, as with the Tamiya kit, it, they only give you in the closed option, but it's very easy to modify uh, to put in the open option. I can just show you here. So this is the completed Tamiya one. You can see I've modified it to get the, the shoot, the spent ammunition shoot open. And I've also modified the Tamiya one in that it's fully movable. So, the owner of this when he gets it can fully elevate his guns and also what i've done on the tamiya kit here is i've drilled out the sight aperture uh stretched stretch a bit of sprue and delicately put in a crosshair 
as it ought to be. Um, the actual kit comes, it's filled in and it's just got a, a scribe line for the crosshair. So that's a little modification to the kit. But it's it's detailed enough. Um, this is in primer. So it, it yeah, can't complain. And it builds well. Tamir always builds well. So, you know, trumpeter, if it's as good as the Tamir bit, it should be fine. Right, so I'm very conscious I'm waffling on, so we must be getting nearly the end if we're building the gun. Yep, so this is us finishing the gun. We've got all the splash guards or blast shields. Uh, the front of the blast shields for the guns where they poke through, and then the two big wing shields going on. Onto the main pintle, and then that will glue down onto the back load deck. Uh, finally, we're constructing the ammunition limber, or trailer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what, one, two, three steps, four steps and you're done. And then it finally goes on and there's a pin there and the pin will tow and pin. Them. So, a uh, really detailed kit, looks like it's going to be fun. So let's have a look at the parts. I'm just going to grab them as they come. So I'm not going to take them out of the bags because I'm not going to build this kit for a little while. So I want to keep them all together, but I think we'll be able to see the detail straight away. This is the top of the transmission where the gear levers go in and the detail is there for everyone to see. Very, very fine details on the leaf springs. Um, bolt details really nice, bonnet details very nice and sharp. Not any flash to really speak about. Maybe a little bit of burring on the parting lines, but it's very, very fine. So, yeah, a little bit of flash on the end parts there, you can see that. But a swipe with a, a scalpel or a sanding stick and it'll be gone. Um, if you look here, the springs are in two parts. This will be the front axle springs in two parts, so you'll have to be join that carefully, to two parts together to avoid getting too much of a seam line to deal with. But, yeah, all in all, not too bad. Right, this is a double sprue. So this is the fighting deck. Again, look at the detail on that. That's beautiful. And we've got Tamiya's deck right here so we can compare. Tamiya's deck's really nice. You have to excuse there's a bit of something underneath the primer that's washed, lifted that up. So I'll have to reprime that. But I would say the trumpeter deck is very fine in its detail. Uh, with more detail, you've got the lifting hatch, lifting handles for the, the, the deck floor. Um, so yeah, they've definitely upped on Tamiya for the detail and again here on the sides lovely bolt rendition and I can feel it through the bag really sharp and crisp it's going to take a wash and a dry brush beautifully yeah definitely nice and there is the main mounting for the gun compare that to the Tamiya one they both look pretty much the same in detail so yeah it's looking good Mud guards again, nice little bit of checker plate on there for where the driver's getting in and out of. And then this is the the bulkheads and the Pioneer tools. They all look quite similar. Really fine detail. Quite happy with that. Right. Ah, okay. So this is the gun here, and we've got another gun mount. So there are obviously two different mounts. One will be early, one will be late, maybe. I don't know. We'll have a look. Right, guns themselves, very fine in detail. We can have a look at the Tamiya guns. Now I've glued the magazines on the Tamiya guns. Um, they look pretty much identical in scale to the trumpeter ones. And I've taken the time to drill out the barrels here. Get that in focus. And the trumpeter ones are slide molded. So their barrels are already hollowed out, saving me a lot of jobs. So definitely a plus point there. Yep, lovely, lovely detail. Again, sharp. You can feel it through the bag. There's no flash, little burn. I'm very happy with that. Okay, we've got magazines here. Again, lovely detail. Very minimal in the way of parting lines. We've got the seats. Don't have very many ejector pins. That's the one curse of the Tamiya kit that does have quite a few ejector pins you have to deal with if the ones that are going to be seen. Certainly in the back of the blast shield, then I've had to take care of quite a lot of ejector pins and you can just see a bit of a witness there for one or two of them, but they'll be hidden when we get the crew in there. You'll not see them. We've got engine detail here, which 
is non-existent in the Tamiya kit, so we're ahead there. Right, this is the trailer parts. So we've got wheels, two-part wheels. Happy enough with them, they'll be fine to sort out. Good de moulding detail on them. No flash, very little burlin. Very fine, fine handles. Very fine moulding. Leaf springs, beautiful. They'll take a dry brush and a wash perfectly. And then we've got, in case this is some ammunition boxes and whatnot, it's going to be in the trailer. Lovely. Right, what we're moving here, this is the front clip, maybe, front wings. And we see differences here to the Tamiya one. Now, there is more, size-wise they're very similar. The jaw is moulded in one piece, whereas the Tamiya one isn't. Um, you've got bolts here on the front and it uh, appears where this Tamiya is beautifully moulded with no mould seams whatsoever. I don't know if this is supposed to be in there or if you can see that through the bag. Let's get it to focus. There you go. There. So you've got a mould line there that's going to have to be removed. Now luckily that's in a reasonably easy place to get to but you've still got to do it and you've got to make sure you blend it back in. This is a focal point of the, the vehicle. A little bit of flash maybe on the wheel latches, but not much. And if we compare them side on to the Tamiya one, they look pretty similar. Pretty similar indeed. Yeah, happy enough with that. Okay, louvered side for the bonnet. And that will be the firewall and the bulkhead. And sure what that part is, possibly part of the driver's seat. Yep, but that will be where the battery goes, says driver's seat. Now there's the instrument binnacle. Uh, there's obviously going to be a decal to go in there for the speedo. If you look on the Tamiya kit, you've actually got moulded detail. So, decal versus paint and wash and dry brush. Now I've painted this one before, so I know it's actually quite easy if you've got good paint and brushes to pick out the detail and make it look really nice. But if it's a decal, it's going to be, from when you see it, it'll be okay. Uh, got nice battery detail there. And again, beautiful detail along the front scuttle panel. And you can feel that through the bag. It's really sharp, beautifully molded. No flash. We've got a nice checker plate and on the driver's floor. I don't know if it was checker plate. The Tamiya one's just got a plain floor. But it, it is what it is. We'll be able to get the dry brush and the wash in there and it'll bring it to life. Right. Running gear for the actual half track itself. Beautiful detail on the wheels. Flash free. We've got multi parts to build up the drive sprockets. Um, two part wheels for the front axle. We've got beautiful detail on the springs. They're going to take a dry brush and a wash beautifully. I say beautiful a lot, but it is. It's really, really cleanly molded. No ejector pin marks, they're all out of the way. Minimal flash, minimal burring, so it's going to be easy clean up. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Right, and finally we're onto the chassis rails for the big sprues. So we've got the seats, nicely moulded, distressed canvas. So they're going to dry brush and, and, and detail up beautifully. There's the seat back. We've got two chassis rails, we've got the winch, we've got the front panel. I'd actually say the detail is a bit shallow on that front panel compared to the Tamiya kit. There we go. So I'd say Tamiya's on a winner there. That looks more detailed than the Trumpeter kit, although they're both reasonably well scaled to one another. Uh, a few odds and bits, the engine, fan, steering wheel, so final drives. Yeah, okay. Right, we have a whole bunch. How many sprues have we got here? So this is the tracks. Individual link tracks. Now I have to give this to Trumpeter. I know it's going to be an absolute pain to build them individually, but you'll get the natural track sag. And these vehicles did have a decent bit of track sag on the rubber band tracks that the Tamiya tank, the Tamiya half track have. Uh, a lot more difficult to get any sag into them. You have to super glue into the wheels, and they, they're they're under detailed. Um, I know when I did the review of the Famo, it had a similar system to this, and it's a shame that they didn't put that in with this kit, but bear in mind the Tamiya kit was first tooled in the 70s, so you know, it is a kit of its time. 
and if they put this into it it'd increase the price point you're only paying 20 quid for the time you kit so they look very detailed there's no ejector pin marks on them how easy they're going to construct i don't know but for all intents and purposes they look really nice right photo etch so we've got one two three four parts of photo etch so you've got the sides for the load bed they look really nice in scale nice square mesh detail and then we've got parts for probably foot plates and stuff like that i should have paid more attention to the instruction again they look really nice it's got that sort of standard german checker plate detail uh, nice um, attachment points so you've got plenty of space to nip them off uh, the blast shields for the gun now I don't know if this is because my kit's quite old but they're slightly bowed so I'm going to have to straighten them out a little bit but they do have a fold in them which will help to straighten them out the detail's really nice on them uh, it's pronounced it's, it looks quite accurate when you compare it to a Tamiya one they're possibly marginally bigger but not much but the detail's in the same area as the Tamiya one uh, so, I'm yeah, quite happy with those. They look good. Uh, what else have we got in here? So we've got the clear parts, and the clear parts are clear. Um, we've got rope for the winch, and a little bit of copper wire for detailing. I don't know what that's for. And the last bag we've got are the rubber tyres, and the detail on them is beautiful. The tread's there. Absolutely stunning detail on the tread. Sidewall detail, I don't know if it's, no, there's no writing on the sidewall, but there's still beautiful detail on the sidewall, so yeah, really happy with them. And that's it, that's the contents of the box, you've got a lot, a lot of plastic in there, and if you saw the price was £35 retail, um, it's £15 dearer as the Tamiya kit, so there's an awful lot of detail for £15 really. Um, yeah, right, well let me get this lot packed away in the box, oh sorry, last thing but not least, we have the decals and you can see got nice waxy cover and paper to protect them and there's the decal for the the center um rev counter steering binnacle uh the speedo that the time is molded so it's definitely a decal you've got a number of different number plates and unit markings so and trumpeter decals are usually really good for this scale it'll be fine right let me get this lot packed in the box and then i'll come back to me and we can have a few final thoughts so there we are, back on me. Well, what can I say? Um, Trumpeter's kit, it's really detailed. Of leaps and bounds ahead of Tamiya's kit. Tamiya's kit's a fantastic kit, don't get me wrong. And if you're really into German World War II half-tracks and anti-aircraft vehicles, I would certainly recommend going for the Tamiya kit as, as a beginner build, because it goes together well, the details well, you've got an opportunity to detail up a bit, and you end up with a fantastic model. But if you, if you want to go for a kit that's got all the detail and can and maybe make a bit more of a versatile uh, diorama model, then the Trump kit's the way to go. Now, Tamiya does a number of half-tracks from troop carriers to anti-aircraft guns, um, but so does Trumpeter. And because I got this kit, I liked it so much, I also picked up, oh dear, this kit. So it's the same base kit, except it's got the armoured cab and it's got the 3.7 centimetre flat 37 on it with a trailer. Now I believe the trailer is the wrong type, but it doesn't really matter. It's a half track with a big gun on it. It's fantastic, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I'll review that one later. I can't think it's going to be very much different from the first one we've done, other than the armoured cab and different armament. So we'll maybe look at that in the, in the distant future. Um, but would I recommend this kit? Um, yeah, I would actually. I think it, it's got potential for a fantastic detailed model. And um, yeah, I reckon it's going to be quite fun to build, although it's going to be a hugely in-depth build compared to the Tamiya. Anyway, enough waffling on. That is Trumpeter's uh, German 2 centimeter flat filling 38 Oust. Oh, no, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. It's the SDK. FZ 7-1 with the flak billing on the back. Uh, if you're into it, I'd say go and buy it. But with a caveat, if you haven't been built Trumpeter before, buy the Tamiya kit, build that, get the experience, and then move on to this because it is 
a far more advanced kit than the Tanya kit. But for the money you pay for it, it's well worth it. Anyway, that's enough for me. That's just a quick inbox review. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see and you want to see a bit more, then please consider liking and subscribing. I am just a new channel trying to build me subscribers up and get the channel going. Um, if there's any kits you want to see and I've got them, drop it on the comment below. If you just want to put a comment down, you want to ask a question about this or the time you kit or the builds, drop a comment below. I read all the comments. I do answer them all and I appreciate everyone taking the time to put a comment down. So until next time, guys, thank you very much. My name's Ian. This is my kitchen table modelers workshop. Cheers. Happy modeling.